there are lots of things that are characterized by a vector. For example, displacement. Displacement means I walked three meters. It matters which, whether I walk that three meters north, south, east, or west. Another example of a vector quantity is velocity. In a three-dimensional world, it not only matters that you're moving at three meters per second, but in what direction, because many times we're going to write down equations where the direction of the velocity is important, too. Acceleration is something that's important because it has a direction as well as a magnitude. And we'll soon learn about things like force. Force is something that causes acceleration. There are other things that are scalar quantities. Scalar quantities are just a number. There's no direction applied. And for everything over here that is an example of a vector, there's a corresponding scalar quantity. So displacement, the, the scalar equivalent is length. When you just say, I, I want to measure the length of, of a ruler, you don't really care in what direction the ruler is pointing. It just means you want to know how long it is. Likewise, if you say the word speed, to a physicist, that's a scalar quantity. It just means how fast are you going and it doesn't matter how what direction it is but velocity is reserved for the term where you're actually you care about both the the speed and the direction of the speed and there are other quantities in here that have only scalar versions of them there's no vector version for example time time is a scalar it there's no direction to seconds how many how many seconds were, were you in the room 3 seconds there's no direction to that time is not in three-dimensional space. Likewise, mass. How, ma how many kilograms does something weigh? Well, that's just a, s a scalar quantity. Things like density. How many kilograms per cubic meter does something have a density of? Or energy. How many joules of, of energy did you, you know, use up today? All of those are scalar quantities. So we have to be very careful when we use words like velocity in a physics class. We mean the thing that has both direction and magnitude. And when we mean things like um, length or speed, we're talking about things that only have a magnitude. So I've said that we can do this little cartoon where we draw a, um, an arrow, but mathematically that's not the best way for how we specify a vector. We need to be able to actually describe it a little bit more carefully. So there's several ways. I think for every way, we require a coordinate system. So you have to devise that you live in, let's say, an xy plane, or if you have a z direction as well, that's great. And one way of specifying or telling someone about your vector, let's say it's capital A right here, is to tell them about the tip of that vector. In other words, assume that the base of the vector, where you start, is always at the origin, and the tip of the vector is right there. Well, this little thing right here is like a coordinate out in an xy plane. And you could tell me that 
your vector is defined by the two numbers a sub x and a sub y. In other words, put your vector down in the xy plane and measure it off how much it projects onto that axis and how much of it projects onto that axis and you'd be all set. And what you would not be able to tell me in sort of implicitly is that the length, the, um, the amount of this thing that you have, which is sometimes denoted as putting a little absolute value or sign around the, the vector, this would be equal, just by the Pythagorean theorem, the quantity square root of ax squared plus ay squared, and the direction, if this is an angle, like phi, the tangent of that angle is equal to a sub y over a sub x. So that's one way. You could just tell me the coordinates. Another way to tell me about what a vector is is to give me another pair of numbers, its length, and that angle, because then I can reconstruct that ax will equal a cosine of this angle phi and ay equals a times sine of this angle phi. So no matter what, in two dimensions you would need two quantities to tell me something about this vector. Either of these recipes is actually sufficient to help us in answering the, the following question, are when are two vectors a and b equal to one another? They are equal if they both have the same length, in other words, magnitude, and are parallel. Because if we're just judging a vector by where we, when we put its tail at the origin and looking at where its tip is, just the direction is all that's important. It doesn't matter where out in space we have this vector, we're allowed to freely move it around and check if it compares well to another vector. So it's important not to get too hung up on where a vector is located, but rather think about it in terms of a length and a direction. If we think that we're always going to come back and stick its tail right here and look at where the tip is, we're going to get used to the idea that the, the, the vector is just limited to the question of length and direction, not where out in space we needed to draw it. So this is a very limited sense of what a vector is.